All right, so at this point, you guys are getting ready to go to a Tyson fight, the Tyson fight. Yeah. Okay. And um, you go to your homeboy, and you also hear the Suge bought 100 tickets for the fight, and you guys leave on a Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you guys meet up with anybody or anything? Oh, shit. No. We just got our rooms. Kicked it every day. Seen the dude the day before the fight on the, on that Friday. Oh, okay. Shit. What was the fight like? You guys went to the fight that night? You guys were sitting separate? Like I got to say, the day before the fight, the Friday, I'm out there waiting. We out there waiting on our cars. I'm waiting on my car. Man came over there. You know, all them bitches around and everything. He made me look like a movie star. You know what I'm saying? What up, big dog? And people like, he got to be somebody. That's why I didn't understand the next night, you know, want to put tips on my nephew. God damn, homie. Yeah. Yeah, this was the day before, right? You said yeah, the day before? The day before. Okay. So uh, take me through the uh, the night of the fight. What, what, um, I was sitting there uh, after the fight was over. We had got our tickets from the scapper, my little homie from Rolling 60s. And he has, we had our tickets everywhere, different where. So I told every, I thought he passed out the tickets. I told everybody, meet me at the cafe. So uh, we, uh, fight was over. We sitting in there in the cafe waiting on our food and stuff. My boy from 1180 East Coast came in there, said, uh, that them dudes that jumped on nephew. By the time they all met up, is when Trayvon comes over and say, hey, there's Baby Lane, the dude that tried to take my chain, Try to take my chain. Everybody keep that, you gotta get that cleared up. Trayvon didn't lose his, his chain. Trayvon, you know, came over there and said to his big homies, which is Neckbone, Buntry. So he didn't tell Puck. He's, his he just verse, said it out in the open. Said it out in the open. Pop. Now we talked about earlier in the interview. Being who he being. You either ride with me or you not with me. Takes off. Didn't say nothing to nobody? Takes off. Ain't said nothing. And runs over there towards the guy. And started literally, I mean, hit him and he falls down. The homie's doing what they're supposed to do. Takes off behind him. Run and then they, you know, you know, stump him out. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, they just jumped on your nephew. And they asked us, did they, did, you know, did we need any help? We're like, no, we cool. And we met up with nephew. And like, them dudes just jumped on me and shit. Yeah. Okay, so you guys went over there, sure, and everybody was already gone? Yeah, they was gone already. And, uh, Hey, guys, I mean... The, when did you meet up with Zip? When did I meet up with Zip? Yeah. When did I meet up with Zip? Right. I met up with Zip... Uh, Before that, right? We was all at the cafe. Oh, okay. Zip was with you guys at the cafe, yeah. and then you guys went outside? Yeah. Yep. Sure enough. Yeah, we went outside. All right. Did, it, did anybody say anything during or before the fight with Orlando? Because I read somewhere that somebody went up and ran up and asked him, are you from the South or anything? No. No? None no, of that? No. Orlando was a kid, man. Orlando was a kid. Grown-ass man jumping on a kid. Yeah, they jumped a baby. They jumped a kid, man. That's wrong, man. How old was Orlando at this time? He was in his 20s, wasn't he? I think he was like 20. Can buy liquor, you know what I'm saying? So you guys meet up with Zip. Yeah. And this is where he gives you the uh, gives you a gun. Nah, I ain't gonna say that. But uh. That's what it says in the book. Well, you don't have to buy the book. Matter of fact, the book is uh, Compton Street Legends. But you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't just gonna give you it all, on where You got to read the book. You know, make the book a little less uh, excited. You know what I'm saying? Orlando's been jumped, and Keefe D gets word 
somebody lets them know that uh, Orlando's been jumped, and then uh, they go meet up with Zip. Right. And and what uh, happens with that? According to Keefe D, Zip and some other guys from New York approach him. They say, hey, you know, we got your back on this. You need some help. And Keefe D says, no, got my boys. We'll handle this. And he says, but we have no, you know, we don't have any weapons. And Zip says, something to the effect of, I can help you out with that. They go out to the car. Zip gives him a, um, a Glock. And then uh, they go after, you know, on the hunt. So one of the little homies, like, we had to, uh, uh, all week they've been uh they've been advertising that they giving a concert at the six six two club. So we go up there to the six six two club. Wait about an hour. They didn't ever show up or nothing like that. So we was on our way home. Stopped and got some liquor. And uh stopped and got some liquor so we there was two cars. There was a van and then the white Cadillac, which was a rental from, I think, Long Beach Enterprise over by the airport. And Keefe D was originally in the van. But after they kind of had a little bit of difference of opinions of whether they should do this, Keefe D gets out of the van and gets into the Cadillac with Terrence, Dre, and Orlando. So there were two cars that originally went over towards the 662. Stop at a... Uh... The, not the liquor barn, but uh, one of them liquor stores out there. We got us some liquor and shit for the go party. Boom, we on our way back. Uh, who all was in the car that night? So you have in the back seat DeAndre Smith. He's sitting in the left passenger seat. And then uh, you have Orlando on the right. And then in the front seat is Keefe D as a passenger. And then Terrence Brown is driving the Cadillac. Oh, you get to... Uh, for me and go in uh, Vegas Boulevard for to make that left. And here we see this dude, uh, skinny man, Tupac. What, what, some girls yelling now? Yeah, he was like, Tupac. He was hanging all out the window like he was in a parade. And damn, dude, we like, there he go. Made a U-turn. Hit that little uh, uh, gutter lane. Yep. After that, boom. Dude, uh, went up, we went up on the side and, boom, made that right, it was over. When you guys pulled up, you seen Suge, you look Suge in his eyes? Yeah. What, what do you, what did, what did you feel at that time? None. And at what point does Keefe D give the gun to Orlando? Just prior to actually pulling up, once they see the entourage, um, going in the opposite direction, they make their U-turn as they're approaching the line of cars. That's when Keefe D hands it to the back seat because he knows that they're going to be on the left side of the vehicle and he's going to have to shoot across the face of DeAndre Smith. Oh, I'm sorry, um, Terrence Brown. Okay. Did he first try to give it to, t to uh, Terrence? Um, no, he first tried to give it to DeAndre Smith, who is in the back seat behind Terrence. Okay. And then what happened? DeAndre Smith was like, nah, I'm, I'm not the one who's going to be doing this. And Orlando just grabbed the gun and proceeded to shoot. You seen the first shot hit Suge? Yeah. What did you think when uh, when you seen it hit Suge? I thought he was a goner. I thought he was a goner. But yeah. Somebody chased you guys and you yeah. still had some more shots were exchanged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure enough. I just get the car fixed and everything. After the shots are fired, uh, the Cadillac takes off, and the girls looks like accidentally ended up following them as they were trying to get out of the way of everything. Yeah, the girls are just like trying to get the fuck away from the chaos. You know, as the shooting ensues, uh, they're not sure what's going on, and uh, you know they just go into the they go in the direction that was seemed like the easiest escape route. So there's nothing like intentional about it. They just have to turn the same way that the Cadillac did. Right, right. And then, and then somebody, uh, somebody else from de the death row entourage followed Keefe D too, correct? Yeah, Buntry um, was driving his Celica, his Supra. And uh, um, then he had, what's his name in the car with him? 
Yeah, the name escapes me right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they followed him, and uh, how, how far did they follow him? A very short distance. You know, once they got around the corner, the Cadillac was taken off. They're receiving fire back in their direction, and so they kind of just back down. 